Uh, hello everyone and welcome to part four of this week's lecture. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to uh, talk about units and dimensions and that are not only confined to fluid mechanics or fluid flow, but also to all uh, engineering and sciences applications. So in engineering, uh, most observations are quantitative because we are always designing something and we need to have precise uh, dimensions of different units. Uh, so all the quantities that we need are need to be quantitative because qualitative observations are usually imprecise and can lead to significant errors in, in designing. So for example, um, if you look at this figure and if you say that, uh, if you make a statement that the plane is flying higher than Mount Everest, so that will be a qualitative observation and it will not help you to find the height of the plane because we are not sure what is the relation between the, the plane and the Mount Everest. Uh, but if you make a statement that the plane is um, flying at a height of 11,000 11, uh, meters, so that is a precise uh, statement where clear, that which clearly states that the height of the plane from the ground is 11,000 meters. So for a physical uh, quantity uh, to be quantitative, it needs to have a magnitude and a unit. Uh, so in engineering, these physical quantities are known as dimensions. And in fluid mechanics, uh, we have something called uh, four primary dimensions that are mass, length, time, and temperature. And these brackets, uh, means that it has the dimension of. So M has dimension of mass, length, uh, L has dimension of length, uh, T has dimension of time, and theta has dimension of temperature. So these are the primary uh, dimensions, and we attach a unit to the, each of these dimensions. So we attach uh, a unit to uh, this, the, these dimensions. So it is uh, really just a way of attaching a number using arbitrary measure, and I have shown in this picture here, uh, uh, the standard kilogram um, here. And this is the standard kilogram against which every other kilogram in the world uh, is measured against. So it is kept in a Bureau of uh, Weight and Measures in Paris, uh, and is uh, uh, the international standard kilogram. So this is one way of attaching a number uh, to a dimension that is mass, for example. So mass has a dimension of, um, uh, mass is a dimension, whereas kilogram is the relative unit that describes mass. The units are, are, are very important because uh, they provide significance to a quantity. Uh, for example, if we say length of uh, 100 uh, without a unit, it doesn't mean anything. Um, uh, it can be 100 meters, it can be 100 of anything else. So it is important to attach a unit to a physical quantity. So uh, in order to attach uh, uh, different units, we have different systems of units. So we have SI system, that is system international or, or metric system. And then we have some other relatively older systems. Uh, for example, we have FPS system that is foot pound second system and then we have MKS system that is meter kilogram and second system and we have CGS system centimeter gram and second and then we have British gravitational system that is uh, for example for mass it has the slug uh, it's not pounds uh, we have length foot second and and for temperature we have Rankine. Uh, so we are going to use uh, System International, uh, especially for this unit. Please always use uh, inter System International units in your in problems. But engineers uh, still use some of the older systems, such as uh, British Gravitational System um, uh, and uh, other uh, units like centigrade, inch, uh, Fahrenheit. So I'm sure you are familiar with the um, SI system. Uh, for the dimensions of kilogram, it's meter. Uh, sorry, for the dimension of mass, it's um, kilogram, meter, second, and Kelvin. 
and then you have other degree as centigrade and you can convert uh, centigrade temperature into absolute temperature by adding 273. And if you are working, for example, in British gas system, you might come in your future, uh, you might come across uh, uh, some jobs where you are using British gas system. And um, in terms of units, you will have uh, mass as slug, uh, length in feet, uh, time in seconds, and temperature in Rankine. And then you can convert uh, the, the degree Fahrenheit to Rankine absolute temperature by adding 460. Uh, so these are some of the most uh, commonly used systems. And as I said, for our uh, case, for this unit, uh, please use SA units. Uh, currently, there is an agreed uh, international system of units known as SI system that comprises of uh, uh, fundamental base units and derived uh, units. So fundamental units are uh, a subset of physical quantities where no quantity uh, in the subset can be expressed in terms of others. So these are the unique um, quantities. So for example, in SA system, we have seven unique base or fundamental quantities. We have mass, that is kilogram, uh, length, that is uh, the unit of meter. We have temperature that has a unit of Kelvin. We have time in seconds, we have current in amperes, we have amount of substance in moles, and we have intensity of light in candela units. So these are the seven uh, primary or fundamental units in SA system. Uh, then we also have uh, derived our secondary units. So secondary units are the physical quantities that are obtained from combination of base quantities. Um, for example, uh, if we look at uh, one of the most important uh, secondary unit, uh, that is force. So force, we know uh, from uh, Newton's uh, second law, we know that force is equal to uh, mass times acceleration. And uh, we can write acceleration as velocity per unit time. And then we can write velocity as time, uh, sorry, distance per unit time. So we are, uh, at the end of the equation, we have mass times distance uh, over squared time. So from this equation, if we, we can, we want to write the dimensions of force, we can write m is for mass, that is m. Then we have distance that has a dimension of length. And then we have time that has the dimension t. And from this dimension, we can easily attach the units to this, uh, this dimension. So for mass, we have the kilogram. For length, we have meter. And for time, we have seconds. And this um, uh, unit in SI system, we call this quantity or this uh, unit uh, in a simpler way as Newton. So Newton, or one Newton, is the force required to accelerate a body of mass of one kilogram by an acceleration of one meter per second. So, so these are what we call secondary units. And here there is a table of uh, secondary units and dimensions. Uh, they are pretty obvious, uh, most of them. For example, area, uh, it would be length square. Then we have volume, it would be uh, length cube. So most of them are pretty obvious uh, where you can easily, by looking at the, at the formula, you can uh, write its dimensions and its units. Uh, but uh, you do run into uh, kind of occasional non-obvious ones. Uh, and I want to point out here, for example, energy. And uh, you can see that it's not obvious uh, how uh, it has these dimensions of uh, these dimensions here. So energy has a unit of joule uh, that is equivalent to uh, Newton times meter. And if you look at, so we cannot, from this formulation, we cannot actually derive these dimensions. So, but we know that that uh, joule is actually equal to 
Newton, um, sorry, Newton times meter. And we know from uh, previous uh, Newton derivation that it's kilogram uh, meter per second square times meter. So we can write it as equal to uh, kilogram meter square per second square. So if you look at it now, so you can see that kilogram, uh, it has the dimension of um, mass uh, times length square and times T minus two, okay? Uh, so that gives you the, the dimensions of energy that is uh, in this form. So sometimes you have to uh, simplify the units further to get the dimensions of a, of a variable. And uh, we will practice this further uh, during our tutorial sessions. So here uh, is a self-task uh, for you guys to do it and try to find out how we can get uh, for the variable pressure, how we can get uh, these dimensions here and these units. So you have to simplify the unit uh, to get these dimensions. So please try it yourself. And if you will not be able to do it, then we'll do it all during our uh, tutorial sessions. Um, as we, um, in engineering, uh, we, time to time, we deal with very large uh, or very small quantities uh, so in order to simplify, uh, we can write these quantities, uh, we use uh, prefixes. So for example, we have here uh, one kilo that is equivalent to uh, um, 1,000. So it means if we write, for example, instead of writing 1,000 meter, we can write it as one kilogram. Similarly, we can write one mega, so instead of writing um, one zero 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 zero. We can just simply uh, meter. We can write it as one mega meter, for example. So it it simplifies uh, uh, the calculation in in a way. Similarly, for very small quantities, we have other prefixes. For example, we have we can write zero point zero 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 one meter as ten to the power minus six meter. And that is actually equivalent to one micrometer. And similarly, for even smaller quantities, we have another prefix that is nanometer, uh, that is actually equivalent to 10 to the power minus nine. So by using these prefixes, we can actually simplify our calculation or, or the way we write these numbers, we can simplify them. Uh, and um, we, we, we uh, previously saw that we have different uh, systems of units or, or there are different units of same quantity, for example, length as meters or length into kilometers or feet. Uh, so it is important to convert one system of unit into another, uh, one, one unit into another unit in, in engineering application. And it is really important that we do it correctly because uh, if we make mistakes in conversion, it can lead to uh, some big disasters. So the easiest way uh, to convert a uh, unit is by using this table method, for example. Uh, so for example, if you have to convert 60 kilometer per hour uh, to meter uh, to a meter per hour, so how you will do it, so you can draw this table here and you will write 60, that is the number. And then you will write the unit as kilometer, and this uh, and the quantity that is in the denominator you write it below this line that is hour. And now we have to convert actually kilometer into meter. So we will write in the denominator one kilometer because kilometer will cancel out with this kilometer. So this one kilometer is equal to one thousand meter. And then finally we have the remaining parts uh, of. We don't have to we don't have to convert h so we can keep it as it is so we get now that 60 kilometer per hour is equal to 60 times thousand that is 60,000 and meter per hour similarly for example if you have to do it uh, 60 kilometers per hour into kilometers per minute so you do the same thing you write the number on the table 
uh, you have the kilometer per hour uh, as it appears in the unit. And then we now want to change the hour into minutes. So we can write one hour so that it cancels out with this hour. But we know that this one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So 60 over 60 would be one. And then we are left with kilometer per minute. So this is how we can use uh, the table method to calculate uh, or convert uh, from one unit to another unit. And again, we will uh, practice that during our uh, tutorial sessions. Uh, here you have some uh, practice questions for you to exercise your concepts, what we have learned in this part. So please try them. And if you will not be able to do it, then I will, uh, I will help you in the tutorial session. So uh, that is all for this week's uh, lectures. And uh, uh, if you go through this week's material, uh, you should be able to achieve all uh, the learning outcomes. Thank you so much for your time.